What's up, and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today we're bringing it back to our James Bond preparation marathon with the second 007 film from Russia with Love, still starring Sean Connery, and this is the film that really started to showcase that James Bond spy spirit. As my original review stated, Dr. No introduced the world to James Bond, the man, while From Russia with Love introduced us to 007, the spy, and to be honest, I really enjoyed this movie. It was 100% a James Bond film. But before we start talking about what kind of MacGuffin Bond is after this time, let's talk about the overall plot and let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, MacGuffin, an object or event that serves as a plot device in fiction but is ultimately irrelevant. From Russia with Love is ultimately about a Russian cryptography machine that everybody in the world wants and James Bond is tasked with heading over to Turkey to secure the machine from their informant Tatiana Romanova. But unbeknownst to both, Spectre is in the background pulling the strings creating a feud between Russia and London in order to create a scapegoat and thwart suspicious eyes while they take the cryptography machine for themselves and exact revenge on James Bond in the process. So the plot itself is kind of confusing if you're not paying incredibly close attention. First time that I saw the movie, I wasn't exactly sure what was happening 100% of the time, and that's because movies just weren't made the same as they are today back then, especially when it came down to exposition. If you missed the point of the film quickly explained to you in the beginning of the movie, you're sort of left filling in holes here and there as the rest of the film plays out, which was my experience with the film at least the first time. The second time, however, was better tenfold because I completely understood what was going on and what kind of roles everybody was playing. It's about a MacGuffin, as I said before, the cryptography machine. I'm still not entirely sure what it does other than, I guess, decrypt spy messages because you never see it in action. It's an object of obsession and desire, but at least it sounds like a spy thing. That's what you have different in this movie, the entire atmosphere of a spy movie. Dr. No felt much more like a mystery or a detective film, while From Russia with Love was a complicated, complex spy story with a lot of moving parts and finally a very memorable spy gadget. You remember in Iron Man 2 when uh, Tony Stark had that briefcase suit? Well, in From Russia with Love, James Bond had a spy gadget briefcase, or attaché case as they like to call it, with lots of cool little things that it can do with certain twists and turns of knobs, which to be honest is one of the many things that I want to see come out of a James Bond film, and seeing it in this movie was certainly a nice touch. I also really like the random humor th strewn throughout the film, especially the two spy organizations who have the truce where they're allowed to spy on each other, so you always have some kind of random person following around the main characters for essentially no purpose. It's absurd. It's absolutely absurd, but for whatever reason, I liked it about the movie. Also, the Bond girl, Romanava, she played a much more substantial role in this film, and the other random girl in Dr. No, Honey Rider, she was essentially just collecting seashells on a seashore. Romanava played a vital role in this film for both the villains found at Spectre, for the Russian spies, and of course MI6 and Bond. Without her, the film wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Even though I totally didn't understand how she was immediately in love with James Bond right off the bat, I did enjoy her role in the movie as a whole. Right now, the biggest issue that I have with the movie is the same problem that I had with Dr. No. It just, it doesn't do the best job explaining to the audience what it exactly is going on or what makes it so urgent or important. It needed a better scene of exposition or something so the audience undoubtedly understands what's going on. Also, I've never really understood the whole Spectre thing, the evil plan of always stealing something in order to sell it right back. I find that to be a pretty silly plan and that's why it's always made fun of in things like Austin Powers because what do you gain out of that other than money? I feel like actually having the crypto photography machine that everybody else wants gives them a whole lot more power than just having money, but I could just be mistaken. Whatever the case, I could definitely tell that this film specifically inspired the likes of Dr. Evil and his henchmen from the Austin Powers movies, as well as the bad guy in Inspector Gadget, always yelling, I'll get you next time, Gadget. Because you never see his face, you just hear his deep menacing voice while he's petting a kitty cat. He might as well be saying, I'll get you next time, Bond, in this movie. I don't really consider this a perfect James Bond film, though. It's pretty cool to see a lot of things that actually happen in this movie, for sure, but I still don't consider much in the movie to be that memorable at the end of the day. Certain things I remember pretty well, like what I called the catacombs that they traversed through to spy on the Russians, or some of the stuff at Spectre's headquarters with number one, number two, so on and so forth. But that's about it. Nothing really story-wise do I consider memorable. So sure, it feels like a spy movie should feel, but it's still not a very memorable addition to James 
spot. It is definitely heading in the right direction though, without a doubt. My score for From Russia With Love was 79%, 79 out of 100 possible stars, granting it the letter grade of C+, which was almost 20% higher than my original score of 62%. Clearly, I had a much better experience with this film than the last time. Guys, I want to hear your thoughts on From Russia With Love. Is it one of your favorite James Bond stories? Let me know below. As for YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button if you like this review and would like to see some others like it. Hit the little bell because that helps notify you when I come out with my next review. And don't forget about the thumbs up button because that always helps out my channel. And until next time, peace out. Thank you.